If you love miso soup as much as I do, stick around because I'm gonna show you how to up your miso soup game using just a few tricks. Welcome back to No Recipes, where we elevate everyday meals using tried and true techniques. I'm Mark Matsumoto, and today I'm gonna show you how to make the best miso soup ever using ingredients you probably already have in the fridge. Miso soup is a Japanese staple, so there's no fanfare or trips to fancy grocery stores needed. You just need to stock a few pantry staples and the rest is up to whatever your veggie drawer coughs up that day. One pantry item you're gonna to wanna to stock up on is a few different varieties of miso. Different misos have totally different flavor profiles, so having a few different options is great so you can choose whether you wanna go a little savory or you're feeling a little sweeter. I'm gonna be using three different kinds of miso today. The first one is shiro miso, which means white miso. It's a specialty of Kyoto made with more than double the koji and less than half the salt. The koji naturally develops sugar as it ferments and a short fermentation time give it a light color, soft texture, and a mild creamy taste. The next one is Tanshoku Miso, which is usually called yellow miso in English. It's an umbrella category that encompasses the vast majority of miso available on the market. It's light to medium tan in color, and it's typically aged 6 to 10 months. At 10 to 12% salt, it's saltier and drier than white miso and can be made with either rice or barley koji. Finally, we have red miso, which is a style of miso most often associated with Nagoya, but there are regions around Japan that use it. It can be aged for up to two years, making it relatively dry with a robust, nutty flavor. The color is much darker because the extra fermentation time results in more Maillard browning. Aside from the miso, dashi is the most important part of a great miso soup. It's a Japanese soup stock made from kelp and dried seafood. Hit the link above for my ultimate guide to making dashi, along with plant-based alternatives. The rest of the ingredients is kind of up to what's in your fridge. I like to load mine up with veggies, so it's almost like a stew. It's a great way to use up odds and ends in the fridge, and it keeps things interesting because no two miso soups are ever exactly the same. Now that you're an expert on all the things that go into a great miso soup, there's only one thing you need to know in order to cook it, which is to add things in order of hardness. So for example, you want to add stuff like carrots and potatoes at the beginning and leafy greens like spinach or broccoli or scallions at the end. Miso and tofu are of course very soft, so you want to add those at the very end. Okay, you're giving me a confused look, so let's look at some examples. For our first miso soup, I'm gonna use dashi, onions, and kabocha pumpkin. I'm also gonna add mitsuba in the bowl when I serve it. Bring this to a simmer and cook these until they're tender. As long as you don't cut them too thick, they should cook through in a few minutes. When the veggies are tender, we just need to add the miso. I'm gonna add white miso to this one, and because it's much less salty than other types of miso, you need to add about twice as much miso. There's nothing worse than getting a mouthful of undissolved miso, so I recommend using a ladle with a small amount of stock to dissolve the miso before adding it to the soup. For the next miso soup, I'm gonna start with dashi and thinly sliced carrots. I'm also gonna be adding spinach and tofu to this version, but they're gonna get added at the end. First, we need to cook the carrots until they're tender. If you're pressed for time, I suggest cutting your veggies as thinly as possible. The carrots are tender, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some yellow miso to this one. Different types of miso have varying levels of salinity, so I recommend starting off with less miso, tasting it, and adding more if it's not salty enough. I think that needs just a little more miso, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in and dissolve it. It's perfect now, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the tofu and the spinach. I like my greens vibrant green, so they go in at the very end, but if you want them a little more tender, you can add them earlier. Time for the last miso soup. For this one, I'm gonna start with dashi and eggplant, 
And then I'm gonna add some aburaage or fried tofu towards the end. I'm also gonna garnish this one with scallions, but they go in the bowl when the soup is served. Okay, the eggplant is looking good, so let's add that fried tofu and let that heat through. The soft texture of the eggplant and the nutty flavor of the fried tofu goes so well with the rich earthiness of aged miso, which is why we're gonna use red miso for this one. No matter what miso you're using, don't let it boil once you've added it or it'll cause the soup to separate. And that's pretty much all you need to know to make an almost infinite variety of miso soups. I hope this helps get you started and I'd love to hear what fun combinations you come up with in the comments down below. Miso soup is the easiest way to turn a bowl of rice into a whole meal and you don't really need a recipe to make it. But for those who want one to start out, I put all three of the recipes that I showed you today on the blog and you can hit the link above to go check them out. If you wanna see more videos like this, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring that bell, and please share this video with all your friends that love miso soup. All right, I've got a ton of miso soup waiting to be eaten. So I'm gonna get a bowl of rice, have lunch, and I'll catch you in the next one. Check us out on Instagram at no recipes.